All right, welcome back, everybody. We're going to do a video today on the five-gallon buckets that we're going to show you how easy it is to disassemble these. And these are a little bit more advanced than the uh, buckets I've been showing you in the past how to make, so there's a little bit more to these. But I'm going to show you how fast we can pretty much disassemble these and then uh, get them ready for uh, winter storage, which you see here, which I'm just starting to get ready now. So what we got here, these are already been emptied. We're just going to wash all these out. And then once everything's washed and rinsed, it doesn't have to be rinsed purified, but you want it rinsed pretty good. Uh, we're just going to splash everything, with, uh, douse it and splash it with uh, bleach. Uh, just let it sit there for, you know, a couple hours. There's holes on the bottom over there where the water drains out. We'll plug them up and then we'll, ble we'll bleach them up. And then uh, we put it in back into storage. And uh, you can see I have all the other stuff here already started to separate. So... The purpose of the video is just to show you how easy it is to disassemble one of these and uh, how quick I break them down. So basically what we do is, we, here's my uh, wild hairy tomatoes. Look at these wild hairy tomatoes. They came up on their own. They're growing all the way into my driveway. So no fruit on them, but figured I'd just show you that for a little. But anyway, check this out. What we're going to do is we're going to take this thing apart. We're going to show you little by little how we do that, how easy it is. and. Um, uh, we'll just break it down. There are some things I want to point out as well that I've noticed. And I'm going to dump the soil and then show you what it looks like underneath. So first thing you want to do with these, there's no real particular pattern where you start with. It doesn't matter really because you're breaking it down. So it's not really that important. But uh, the first thing I like to do is remove all my rope, get rid of the sticks. The gravel from last year, you can see I got that gravel. I pretty much recycle that and then I keep it in the pail over winter. I'm also going to bleach that. And then uh, I just leave it out. And then when the springtime comes, I rinse it again, maybe another bleach. And then uh, from there, I just uh, reuse as much as I can. It, it doesn't last forever, this gravel, because it does get mixed into the dirt. But you try to get as much as you can out of it, and you can get a couple of years out of it. So first thing I want to do is take this apart. I got my trusty knife. Let's give it a go. You know, if you want to really save this stuff here, you could. I don't. I'm just going to burn all. Then you want to remove this. The plants now these these plants are they're dead and gone so we want to make sure we remove that take your don't throw these away you can re reuse them these are the ones you rip your fingernails off with trying to get these things off get rid of them people are saying no you buy the white ones they're better they're stronger they're garbage get rid of them don't use those those are too hard they rip your nails apart look at my fingernails are all broken from that You want the blue ones if you could. Those are only going to last for about two years, maybe three years, these, these rings. And then either you rebuy it or you don't even have to buy it. You could just take this cloth like you see here and just put a string along the top and just tie it. You don't need these lids. These lids are just nicer. They make it much easier to make, you know, just to make the whole system work. But you don't have to have it. But these are only going to last about two to three years. The pails can last anywhere between five and almost 10 years you can get almost 10 years out of these pails some of these pails i've had already for at least five or six years and they look fine as long as if you pull them in for the winter and you don't leave them out all winter and expose the sunlight unnecessarily but these rings for some reason they don't last very long pull your thing out like this lift your your thing up make sure you keep these separate i keep them in here uh, try to get as much of that rock as you can out of there because you're trying to preserve it. And that's it. Then what we do is we bring this over here. For example, if I was dumping the soil somewhere closer by, then I would just dump it on the ground or near that garden. But I've got to wheel this back to the garden. Okay, so one of the things I want to point out here. Um... Like you can see, these are all the old roots. Those are, you know, you, we're going to rinse all this out of here, so it doesn't matter. Uh, take those, put them in the pail. Now, one thing I noticed, and I'm, I'm going to make this change. This is really important. Um, what I have noticed... And we're going to rinse all that out, so you just need to get it out of there for now. What I have noticed is if you look at this stuff here, 
This is the Coco Choir. Okay. Uh, in general, you can see that the Coco Choir never broke down, which is good. That was the ultimate purpose of the Coco Choir. I didn't want it to start, you know, just breaking down. I didn't. I wanted to stay as uh, unbroken down as possible, which it, which it achieved that goal. However, for some reason, the Coco Choir has a very um, rotten egg smell to it. The rest of the dirt, like over here, it does. It smells perfectly fine. There's no odor in the regular dirt part at all. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, what's starting to stink is this stuff. This stink smells like uh, just like rotten eggs. That tells me that it went on anaerobic. That's not good for your plants in general. So I will no longer be using Coco Choir uh, in my wicking cups. I'm just going to use regular dirt from now on. Uh, but again, you could see that the Coco Choir... Uh, it really didn't break down at all, which is the ultimate goal. I didn't want it to break down. I just wanted it for wicking and artificial wicking uh, stuff or natural wicking, whatever you want. However, it does smell anaerobic. So because of that reason, I'm not going to be using uh, Coco Choir anymore. Now, that's it. We're done using that. And so that's it. That's basically how you break these down. I just wanted to give you a quick uh, demonstration of that. Now, let me just talk about one or two more things. What I do with these is... Um, now I have a lot of pails and next year I'm probably going to double what you see here in pails. So I'm, I have, I think probably close to 40 pails now. So next year, by the end of the next year, I'll have between 80 and hundred pails, which will probably take up most of my driveway, believe it or not. However, um, I like the results of that I'm getting with my pails and they're much more controllable. If one gets diseased, I can isolate that plant, get it away from the other plants, that kind of stuff, you know? But uh, I will be doubling my pails. Now, that's going to require a lot of storage area for me to do that. But it's worth it for me in the long run because now I don't need a giant garden, but maybe I'll do both. I don't know. I don't know what to do. However, what I want to point out about this is once you get to this stage, in general, what you need to do from here is uh, we need to store all these things in one one uh, container, then I, st I store all the lids in the other container, and then I, you know, I separate everything and I clean them and then I store them that way. That's the best way to do it. Um, the way I like to clean my pails in general is I wash them down really good. I don't scrub them or anything per se. If they're really, really dirty and nasty, yeah, then we'll give them a little bit of a, you know, scrub. I got like a hand brush. I just go in there and one, two, three. I don't spend more than maybe a minute on it at most. But I, I use bleach, and I make sure that the bleach is incorporated into the washing, and uh, everything kind of goes through a bleach soak. So all my little hardware and all this stuff all goes into like a bigger vat that's going to be bleach water. And uh, they all get dipped in there, stay in there for about five minutes, and they come out, and then I rinse them with the hose, and they, they just get put into this, and that's the end of it. So we want to make sure we kill the biology from last year and get all the dirt and stuff out of there. And then outside of that, basically, it's just as easy as, you know, just taking these containers and then storing them. Again, I store them in there, you know, or in, inside the other shed. And, um, you know, they take up a lot of room. But like I say, it's a garden on wheels. I can pretty much, with this unit, with this system here, I can set up 40 containers, like nothing. I mean, it's a lot of work to set them up, but like it's meaning nothing. It's not like trying to do a garden, you know. Uh, in the middle of nowhere I can be on the, in other words I can live on the road and set my containers up on the road and literally grow my plants for a season like if I want to do my winter gardening in Florida right because up here uh, once uh, winter comes that's the end of gardening for us but down in Florida I might still be able to do my winter garden so I might be able to uh, snowbird my my lifestyle go down south and um and then, uh, you know, I start growing my plants and everything down in Florida for the winter. So I can basically start farming twice a year. But I can do it easily with a system like this and uh, really grow a lot of crops that way in uh, two parts of the, of the world, if you want to use that term. Uh, basically, at, in one year. So I can basically do two growing seasons a year. Yeah, I can go to Australia, but that wouldn't be too easy for me to bring these pals. I'd have to have land in Australia. And then all this would already have to be there. So, But anyway, guys, that's it. Just wanted to give you a quick uh, overview of these pails, what I do to clean them, how I'm cleaning them out. Also, too, the, um, these things. I'm going to do an update video on what I'm doing with, um, with these things and why I'm using this as a way to um, 
you know, control my tomato plants and everything. And some of the updates I need to do for, for that, uh, that system. It works good, but it needs to be refined. But we'll do that in the video in the spring. You'll get to see that in spring. All right. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one. Take care.